Welcome back to Night Mine, friends. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Now, I know I usually do bring you something that's different from what most people expect, but you're probably thinking right now that tonight is really different. And it is. Wonderfully so, in fact. I think it might even inspire some of our visual artists in the crowd. The nature of tonight's exploration actually brings to mind an art form that's consistently finding new ways to be unique. Anime. And because it's the end of summer, that means new series have arrived and the fall slate of new releases is on the way. So before we get going, our friends at Crunchyroll want to sponsor us on this adventure to make sure we don't miss out on any of the action. Tower of God, a Crunchyroll original, is up to 13 episodes right now, and the best example of what can happen for aspiring narrative artists online. The author SIU began releasing Tower of God online in 2010, and not only did it become a super hit in its original form, it got a major following for the anime. As mentioned in our previous visit from Crunchyroll, Death Note is available in its entirety, so you have no excuse not to see Death Note now. It's right there. Go do it. I swear by it. Go watch Death Note. And of course, we've got the type of content we're all going to be craving a lot more of as September approaches. The Promised Neverland is a long-term survival horror available in its first full season that brings terror from Episode 1. And with news of Season 2 coming in January, you can expect more story to arrive sooner than you think. Yamashibai, Japanese Ghost Stories, is a very stylistic collection of tales based on Japanese urban legends and the whole series so far consists of seven seasons. So if you wanted to indulge in a major marathon of horror from Japan, this is an excellent choice. And if you like that, Crunchyroll also has Kagiwane, a narrative series from the director and writer of Yamashibai centered on a character capturing footage of monsters to put online who gets involved in something even more terrifying. Sounds like a web series we might discover, doesn't it? These are just a few options for you that I can mention. Crunchyroll Premium offers unlimited anime, manga, and drama titles, with the newest episodes of running series arriving just one hour after airing in Japan via simulcast. All episodes are professionally subtitled, available in 1080p HD, and can be viewed on all your devices, from consoles to phones and smart TVs. You can go to crunchyroll.com slash nightmind or click on the link in the video description to get your 14-day free trial of Crunchyroll Premium now. That's crunchyroll.com slash nightmind. If you find something in the Crunchyroll library you think I'd love, let me know in the comments below. Big thanks to Crunchyroll for another sponsor and a great offer for Nightmind viewers, especially when the major craving for horror anime is about to kick in. Now, let's get acquainted with a form of unfiction we haven't seen before. The Online Immersive Horror Comic Started in August of 2018, Conspiracy Research Club is the tale of a few ambitious students from Poppy Valley High School, illustrated in a style that fits in perfectly at the lunch table with anime and manga and taking place entirely on Twitter. Our hero and club co-president is Luna Gardner, accompanied by the two other members of the club, Jamie, the other president, and Katya, the only vice president, you might say. In addition to their usual activity, they want to start live-tweeting their meetings. Immediately after showing off the club room, we see banter between members of the group online, with Katya replying to Luna about how she looks creepy sitting in the corner. And already, you can tell what a unique setup and storytelling method this is. Whereas everything in a typical Twitter-involved story would require people using photos and videos, CRC goes for illustrations of the action as substitute, from the same perspective of someone with a smartphone. It seems like such a simple and obvious tactic as a storyteller, but it's still such a clever move. Luna says her club investigates conspiracies and mysteries in the local area, but they usually don't get requests, so they just hang around the club room and browse the internet. She tries to share her knowledge of the US government being secretly bankrupt since the 40s as a way to open conversation with newcomers, but then decides that it's too much. Luna takes us to the mailbox, then reveals what's inside. A reason to start live tweeting. Today is a special day for the club. They finally received their first serious request in weeks. The anonymous writer says, My friends tell me you're just a bunch of weirdos, but nobody else will believe me. My house is next to the dark woods at the end of town, and one night I started hearing strange noises of laughter. I looked out my window and there it was. I know it's super blurry, but this is not a prank. A bunch of creepy clowns were running around outside. Ever since then, I can't sleep. Please figure out what's going on so we can go to the police. Luna confesses she'd rather stay and have snacks, but Jamie's adamant about going, so they're heading off. Katia stays behind, playing the part of the operator at the desk, like any classic research team setup. 
While en route, Luna gives us a breakdown of her knowledge about sudden clown sightings. Phantom Clown Syndrome is a common occurrence throughout the world, where people will claim to see terrifying clowns near woods. Occasional mass hysteria from these phantom clowns has been occurring in the United States since 1981. Can it really be just a coincidence that so many people from different walks of life so often claim to see creepy clowns near wooded areas? I think there might be something to it. There has to. Jamie agrees, even though he's a moron. Jamie says I am not allowed to use negative words like moron when using my conspiracy club Twitter. Moron, 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 idiot, 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 idiot. We receive a time jump card telling us it's been a few hours later, then a report from Luna that they're outside the woods where the clowns were seen. It's cold, which is very strange for a night in August. Katya suggests Luna and Jamie warm each other up, which is a swiftly rejected idea. The shot is provided by Luna of the area, taken on a selfie stick. The only lighting they really have comes from the stars. The half hour passes, and then we receive this message from Luna. Only to be told right after it was someone on a bicycle who scared her. False alarm. Luna and Jamie arrive at the entrance to the woods and don't see anything yet. It's just boring woods, but chills are going down my spine constantly. It's really annoying. Jamie offered to give me a back massage, so I punched him. There's some banter from Katia and Jamie, who shows up on Twitter for the first time, and after a half hour of silence, an all clear selfie. Time passes after that as we wait for an update from Luna. Then, on their way out. Katia replies, asking if this is a joke. Minutes go by with no response. Finally, Luna manages to say, It's still holding me. Katia immediately asks if she should call the police. Luna confirms, and Katia follows the order. After minutes of live readers waiting to see what happens, Luna releases them from holding their breath. We managed to get away. What the hell was that? Some creepy old guy and he stank like rotten food. Ugh, I want to go home, damn it. Katia tells Jamie he should have protected her, and he insists they're now fine. Luna no longer wants the police, but it's a non-issue as Katia couldn't get through to them anyway. Luna gives us an update. Jamie says we can go home, but we ran so fast into the woods from that creepy guy that we forgot where the entrance is. Neither of our smartphone maps are working right now. It's kind of weird. It's just glitching out. Half an hour passes. Our next update isn't about escaping from the woods. Luna and Jamie have come across an abandoned theme park, with a circus planted firmly at the entrance. Katia reports that it shouldn't be there. Luna says everything is rusty and looks very old. Minutes later, she tweets out, If you guys cancel the police calls, please start them up again. That creepy clown guy followed us here, and he brought friends. They're just staring at us from around corners, saying nothing. Jamie's trying to talk to them, but they're just smiling. How rude. One of them ran at Jamie and started screeching in this high-pitched way. And to everyone's surprise, the next tweet is a shot of Jamie taking out that very same clown, striking fear into the others who come running. But that doesn't make any sense, right? Not for killer clowns. And yet, here's Luna explaining why it does. Turns out it's just a bunch of old guys trying to do viral marketing by scaring kids. Apparently they want to restart the theme park as a haunted house type of experience. Katia admits, that sounds kind of cool actually. Jamie adds, they promised us free tickets. Luna informs her followers that the clowns apologize for scaring them. And if anybody likes haunted house stuff, the abandoned wood circus opens in January. Luna and Jamie received hot cocoa and an escort out of the woods. Katia says, Phew, that's good. I was getting really concerned earlier. Jamie, you idiot. If killer clowns are approaching you, you don't try to talk to them. As a final note on the way out, Luna says, I told them their disgusting smelling friend who dug his nails into our faces was way too far. One's out of the woods and on the way home. There's one more statement. Huh. Apparently he wasn't with them. The next case file for the Conspiracy Research Club is titled The Screaming Hallway. And we would go over this one, but it's a case that Luna herself wouldn't want us bothering with. Long story short, CRC receives a letter from AC, the Astronomy Club, that reads, The Astronomy Club meets up at the school roof during nighttime, but lately we've been too scared to go. Something is screaming through the hallways at night. We try telling the teachers, but they think we're playing a prank on them. If you can, please figure out what is going on. 
We are too scared to do our club activities. Without much else to do, Luna and Jamie decide to investigate, and they do hear a horrifying, growling noise coming from the school's basement, only to find the after-school janitor staff playing Dungeons & Dragons. Unexpected, but not supernatural. Luckily, things pick up a while later, starting with Luna's cheerful mood and a selfie from her bedroom. Good morning, everyone. I hate school. I want to stay in bed. Retweet if you hate school. And of course, there's a nice touch of their first adventure hanging out on the bed in the form of a clown plush. Luna's most objectionable class that day discusses currency, which sends her on a Twitter thread about the globalist conspiracy to create money that has no true value, which nearly gets her caught by a teacher. Katia tells her to stop tweeting during class, to which Luna replies, at least I actually go to class. Resuming her lesson avoidance via tweeting, Luna notes that a few students are missing, which is odd, because there's usually perfect attendance. She talks a bit more about how she hates class until getting detention and crying out to Jamie, who just laughs at her. Thankfully, it seems that detention isn't same day, as Luna later writes, Finally, I survived today. Heading to the club. Oh, we have a good request this week. People in the hall are talking about tonight's video. Anyone know what's going on? Jamie pipes up. Come to the club and I'll tell you. You'll like it. Luna updates us with the latest letter for CRC. A private message sent to Jamie. An anonymous person asks if the club is crazy, then follows up with a link to a video platform. It reveals a channel with four students. David Parker, Lisa Cunning, Elliot Warner, and James Fox. Luna tells us what we can't pick up for ourselves. The videos are just some students' yearbook photos with creepy static, and it slowly zooms in while a distorted whisper says prepare over and over and over. It's pretty weird why the latest video has so many views compared to the others. Katia remarks about how that's the school's star quarterback. There's a bit of banter between the group about football, and Luna reports that they looked into the students from the videos. After each became absent from school, their corresponding video appeared. According to our neighbors in the news club, the videos gained traction yesterday when the video of our school star quarterback, James Fox, didn't come to school even though he has a perfect record, Luna writes. The channel was discovered because it came up in search results for some of the vid.share recordings of our school's football matches. I wish we could avoid it, but we have to go visit these students. They're all kind of popular, so we don't know anyone who has their phone number, and the popular kids probably wouldn't let us have them if we asked. Jamie and Luna decide to split the house visits between them. The first report comes in from Luna, visiting Lisa Cunning's house. It's been painted entirely white and all the windows have been sealed. After a bit, she reports back. Lisa Cunning's mom invited me inside for a glass of milk. She seemed concerned for her daughter when I said I was her friend. Apparently, she hasn't been home in a while. Is it normal to make a guest change into bed sheets and rub their face and hands with disinfectant before letting them enter? Is this what a normal family is like? They're pretty friendly and all. It's not that, but my eyes hurt from all the bright white lights. I asked them if I could have some water instead of milk, but they say they only drink milk in this house because milk is white and white is pure. I don't know about you guys, but this house seems kind of weird. Okay, so we talked about Lisa. They said Lisa disappeared on the night the video was released. They called the police and they have been looking for her. They keep talking about what they would do if she became dirty. That's all they seem concerned about. They keep asking me if the school is clean, and if we clean the school every day. I'm leaving. They are friendly, but they don't seem to be of any help. That and Mrs. Cunnings keeps asking me if she can wash some tiny dirty spots off my hoodie and skirt. Luna shares the report she got from Jamie. He went to James Fox's house and nobody answered the door. So, he broke in. The house was dirty and there was a friendly dog, but the entire home smelled of smoke and alcohol. James's father was asleep on the couch with the TV still running. Bottles and cigarettes were everywhere. There are two interesting things to take note of here, one of which Katia brings up. What's that conversation at the top? Referring to Luna telling Jamie, I hate him. Luna tells Katia, you know what that's about. Don't ask me in a public tweet. Another note. Jamie's message was sent twice. Could just be an accident of Twitter system, but let's not forget about it just in case. Luna goes to the home of Elliot Warner next. I arrived at the house, but nobody was home. A man in a suit suddenly walked in and shut the door in my face. When I knocked, he opened and went like, What? I explained it's about Elliot Warner, but he didn't seem to know he was missing at all. That stressed guy in the suit seems to be his dad, and got angry when I said he hadn't been to school. 
He said if I can't find my boyfriend, then he doesn't want to see me. He then said he's busy and left the house, running to his car. Jamie and I are meeting up at the last house together, since it's closest to the school. Wonder how the students are all going missing. Could it be a group kidnapping them? Maybe the government? What do you guys think? Luna meets up with Jamie at the final home. They haven't made much progress, but they're in good spirits. The house looks pretty normal so far. Just a normal house with a normal garden. Tried knocking. Nobody's answering even though there's light in the windows. Jamie's trying to break in. We're inside the house. We'll probably delete these tweets afterwards so nobody screenshot them. Jamie says it's okay if lives are at risk. House looks normal, but something stinks. Like rot. Luna and Jamie keep exploring. Their next picture comes from the bathroom. We're calling the police. Luna's final message reads, The police are on their way. I think I'll stop tweeting for tonight. I'll update you guys later. The next file continues the story from the previous. The stars are falling. Luna comes through for us with a much needed update thread. Hi everyone. Sorry I haven't tweeted for a few days. Not been in the mood, honestly. Due to the positive response my live blogging has gained from you guys, I feel I owe it to you to explain what happened last week. I'll be tweeting between classes today. I don't want my phone to be confiscated by teachers. Last week, when investigating a series of disappearances, we found a dead body at the home of David Parker, a student at Poppy Valley High who was one of the four students to mysteriously vanish following a YouTube video being uploaded with their name and face on it. The body was that of Benjamin Parker, the single father to David Parker, the first student to have disappeared. We called the police, and when they arrived, they started asking us a ton of questions. They were obviously wondering what we were doing inside a dead person's house, but considering our club description and the disappearance of David Parker, us being there made sense. It seems pretty natural to assume that Mr. Parker died on the night of his son's abduction. However, there were no real signs of struggle around the house. And what was with the obsessive scribblings on the wall? The stars are falling. Luna posts a message from school faculty that had been posted on the notice board that morning. Dear students, as many of you are already aware, several students have gone missing in these last few days. What you might not be aware of is that yesterday the parent of one of the missing students was found passed away in his home. The Poppy Valley Police Department is currently investigating. If you know anything, please contact them. Until this matter has been resolved, we are instating a curfew for all students to be home no later than 6pm. Furthermore, we would like all students to refrain from walking to or from school alone. We would like to thank you for your cooperation. Sincerely, Principal Ian Callister. Luna continues. Mr. Spector had to read this announcement out to class this morning. He looked really sad and angry that some of his students had disappeared. It was kind of disgusting. Anyway... The police are investigating this, right? In that case, why are we needed? What's a couple of teenagers in a conspiracy research club going to do to make a difference in a case of abduction? Here's the thing. The police don't seem to be looking at the YouTube channel and they haven't made a single attempt to question anyone at school. And that's relevant because last night while everyone was sleeping, this video was uploaded. Jamie tried calling the police station, but they seem to be intentionally avoiding questions about the YouTube channel. Here's the most interesting thing. Unlike all the other disappeared students, Martina Lopez showed up to school today. So you know what that means. The moment I'm done with these classes, we're going to go talk to her and figure out what's going on. And the CRC does go to contact Martina, but to find out what happens there, you'll have to follow the story yourself. It's no fun if I just sit here and spill it all, right? Luna has a pinned tweet on her account, CRC Luna, which rolls out a thread with Twitter event links to each investigation, like chapters in a book. You'll want to pick up from the link in here, file 4. After that, just return to the main thread and use the events or moments link for each file. I've really never seen anything like Conspiracy Research Club. It's an excellent use of Twitter and some of its lesser known features to really turn it into something the platform's creators never expected it would be, and the result is fantastic. You've got to be so clever to figure out you could run a story this way. And the effort of interwoven tweets and sudden pictures as you scroll makes it unlike any other comic experience. It's an illustrated story, yes, but it's also one fiction, playing out in live time and keeping the setup in reality through immersive means. Content-wise, it's also just fun. 
There's a genuine air of youthful excitement here, catching on to something unique in everyday life and ditching the mundane and monotonous routine of school to chase a mystery. These are likable characters and you want to find out more about them and their dynamic, especially after the small hints we've seen that relay there's more to discover outside the conspiracies they investigate. And as for the art, it's appealing in all aspects, especially when it's time to hit the horror notes. These punches land, not just from suddenly showing up like a well-timed scare on the timeline, but from the pure visual quality and atmosphere created. Conspiracy Research Club really stands alone online, even as an example of Twitter-based unfiction. Serious applause goes to the team behind it. Mary Weathery, Bakua Tsukiyu, Pararu, and From Everest. Sorry if I totally messed up pronunciation at all just now, I did my best. <laughs> In any case, you can use the bio on Luna's account to reach all of them. And there's a Patreon that supports the team creating Conspiracy Research Club as well. And that's it. Not the typical Nightmind video, I know, but it's never good to get too typical, right? Sometimes, really, I just want to bring you things I know are truly unique and legitimately inspiring. There are a lot of you who have skills you may think can't be translated into the type of storytelling you want to try. And beyond just wanting to show you something great, I wanted to bring you Conspiracy Research Club to show that there are absolutely more outlets for your creativity and skill than you may realize. Sometimes it just takes a bit of reimagining and innovation. After all, that's how we get some of the best stuff in this field. Thanks again to Crunchyroll for sponsoring this video. Thanks to all of you for watching. And thanks of course to all of my supporters on Patreon who are part of your own favorite YouTube-based CRC. You can join our club and support Nightmind for just $2 a month, which gives you access to the community and puts your name in the roll call at the end of each major video. Stick around to see everybody hanging out in the club room this month. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and I'll be back so we can ditch school and chase mysteries together real soon. Until then, sleep tight.